Hey everyone, Erin from The Impatient Gardener. And if you've been watching this channel for any amount of time, you've probably seen the urn that I plant every year, sort of smack dab in the middle of the garden off the patio. Well, that urn actually came into being probably eight, maybe 10 years ago when I bought an urn to put a Christmas tree in. And then when Christmas was done, I had to put it somewhere and it was um, sort of a tall, skinny one. I put it in the middle of the garden and I sort of liked it. I mean, it wasn't really my intention. I was just trying to fill up a spot where I needed a plant or something needed to be there. And I thought, well, we'll try this for this year. I ended up liking it enough that that urn stayed for a long time. And when that urn broke, I bought another urn. And that's the urn that I've had for, I think the last three or four years. Um, this was another fiberglass one, but this one was more bowl shaped and I put it up on a pedestal. The pedestal was actually a pot I bought at Target, turned upside down um, with, we cut some wood and glued it together and sort of made our own little wood top for the top of the pedestal for this thing to sit on. And several of you noticed it was a little wobbly over the years. I mean, that whole contraption before you stuck soil and it probably weighed all of 25 or 30 pounds. So it, it was not, really gonna like hurt anybody or anything if it fell well anyway speaking of falling it did in fall when i was trying to empty it out uh some of the plants that were in there grew so tight that i couldn't get them out and in trying to pull them out the whole thing fell over the bottom broke off for like the third time we've been gluing the thing back together for several years now so it broke there's a big hole in the bottom of it and uh, uh it was time to replace it so I've really come to love that urn in the middle of the garden. Um, it allows me to do something different in the middle of the garden that I wouldn't be able to do with just plants that were planted in the ground. Like I just get to do something completely different because like sticking last year, I had Tropicana canna in there. Sticking a big canna in the middle of my garden would be a little bit random, but somehow when you put it in a pot, suddenly you're allowed to do things. I mean, you can always do whatever you want, but in my head, I was allowed to do something design-wise that um, just wouldn't have seemed right otherwise. Anyway, fast forward to this year, the urn had to be replaced. I wanted to stick with the urn concept and I spent a lot of time this winter looking for an urn that would last a long time and Primarily, actually, the number one, the number one criteria was something big enough because my complaint with what I've had in the past has been that it's never big enough. I mean, if you're going to do something like that, you need to make a big enough statement in the middle of the garden. And I always felt like I wasn't able to get as many plants into that as I wanted to. So my number one criteria when I was looking was big. My number two criteria was that if it was going to have to be something that also was heavy, it had to be something that I could leave out all winter. I'm obviously not going to move that back and forth. So I ended up going down the route of, um, you know, a really nice pot. I ended up buying a cast stone pot and it arrived in this giant crate. And then came the question of how do I get this into the garden and how do we make sure that this never moves? So I thought I'd walk you through briefly how we put this thing in the garden. So the total shipping weight of the pedestal plus the urn was listed at 720 pounds. The good news is, is that the shipping weight appears to be significantly off from the actual weight. So that's that was great news for me because I thought we were gonna have to rent machinery to move this thing in. And turns out we could do it all, all by hand with some help. So what I did, first of all, was I needed to make a footing in the middle of the garden because that garden um, is actually soil that I sort of built up in there. Um, it's really good soil. It's not a firm base. It's not like sticking it on top of really compacted soil and certainly not um, on like a driveway or something like that. So first of all, if you're interested in more of a discussion of how I figured out what to do here, um, I did do a podcast uh, with Eric from Garden Fork about it where he sort of worked through some options with me. So I'll put a link to that in the description and you can check that out if you want to get into all the details of the other things that we considered. But at the end of the day, what I ended up doing was digging a hole that was basically 26 inches square. I dug it down uh, like 15 inches, 14 inches. Uh, we filled that up with 
um, about three quarters of it filled up with um, gravel or chip stone that would compact together well. And then I put on um, a thick layer of paver base. Now all of this is being tamped in between, in between layers. So we're really compacting this every time, every two bags or so of stuff that we put on there, we would compact it really well. Then we did an inch of, sto of, excuse me, of sand. And then I laid just pavers on top of it. And everything was going really well until it came to the part where we were gonna put that polymeric sand in the pavers to sort of lock it together. I was really trying to avoid a mortar situation. I just didn't wanna get into it. From there, uh, then we just moved it over piece by piece. The good news is, is that the pedestal came in three pieces and the urn itself came in the bowl plus the sort of foot part of it. So that made moving it much easier. Uh, the directions did say to um, attach the various pieces. For the pedestal, I did talk to some other people who have really big stone pieces in their, in their um, yards, and a lot of them did not actually glue the pieces together because they wanted the ability to take them apart if a drainage hole got clogged um, or if they had to move them or something in the future. So for the pedestal, I only glued together the middle part and the top. And then of course for the urn, um, we had to glue together the top two, the top two pieces. So uh, we actually ended up using um, essentially a construction adhesive made for concrete. Um, there, the directions actually suggested we should use mortar. I did not want to get into that. This seemed a lot easier. We'll see how that goes in the end. Anyway, uh, I think you can see that we had to get some help in to lift this thing, um, but it got in place and it's there. So um, let me show it to you so you can get some idea of the scale. Okay, here it is. So I think now I'm on the downhill side of this right now. Um, actually, as you can see, I think a lot of the ground got disturbed and some plants got disturbed in here. Um, so this will all get built up, up to be, you know, quite a bit tall. Taller, so it looks a little bit taller than it might appear. Uh, but I want to bring over, this is the old pot, so that you can see the difference in size on them. I am gonna repurpose this old pot. So one of the things I'm really excited with this pot is that it's, it's quite a bit deeper, so there's way more soil volume, which is really good for plants. And I have always felt hampered with this one when it came to planting. I couldn't quite get all the plants I wanted in there. so. I think this walks uh, sort of that balance line a little bit in that um, it is big enough to allow me to have a lot of free range with the plants I put in it and small enough that it doesn't look totally crazy, although it does look a little big right now when there's really nothing else in the garden. I guarantee you um, this will all look uh, a little different once the garden's all growing and you don't see so much of it. So it will, this whole thing will darken over time um, and it will grow, it will develop a patina and it might even grow a little moss on it. Um, so we're just gonna let it uh, naturally change color, which it will do probably pretty quickly is my guess, um, but certainly over the first year or two. And there is, not that you can see it, but there is one big drain hole about that big in the bottom, which goes all the way through all of the parts and then this bottom part sits on little rubber feet so the whole thing is raised up about half an inch so there should be plenty of ways for water to get out of this pot so that's the urn i'm excited about it, it was a big investment but i thought you know this is very much a focal point of the garden and it's something that i quite luck like even though I know this is a little bit out of the ordinary. It's not every day that you go stick a giant um, piece of cast stone, uh, concrete, whatever this is, in the middle of your garden, but I like it. Okay, so that's that. Um, I'm looking forward to planting it up for the first time. Hopefully that'll be soon. All right, thanks for watching. Have a great day in your garden. Bye.